Welcome to the Rideshare Dojo. If you're an Uber or Lyft driver or anyone in the gig economy, this is the place for you. With tips and techniques, interviews with passengers and industry leaders, entertainment, inspiration, motivation. Here, with over 23,000 rides, is your host, Jay Crater. Let's enter the dojo. Hey, everybody. Uber drivers, Lyft drivers, Instacart drivers, Postmates, Ease, Zoom drivers, DoorDash, Via, Amazon Prime, Amazon Prime Now, Uber Eats, Grubhub, all you drivers and passengers and all of us who are part of this big, beautiful gig economy, welcome. It is so great to have you here for today's exciting episode. My name is Jay Crater. Let's enter the dojo. All right, all right. Welcome to the show. So I've had it with the coronavirus. I've had it with all this AB5 stuff. I need to take a little bit of a break. So I thought, hmm, well, why don't I just slow it down a little bit and uh, talk about something I love, which is movies. And I'm going to share with you, I'm going to expose a bit of myself here. I'm going to share with you my top five movies of all time, and I'll just spend a minute or two telling you about it and why it resonates with me and why I love the movie so much, so much, okay? So uh, if you're not into movies, click off and come back next week, and we'll be talking more about rideshare stuff. You'll see these are more definitely guy movies, um, because I'm a guy. And uh, I like movies that uh, make me feel something. I like movies that make me cry. Um, I like movies that uh, teach me something. And, uh, and I think you'll see that all these movies do those things. So, without any further ado, Cinco, numero Cinco. My daughter uh, right now, she is in Argentina. Uh, d- uh, doing a two-week medical internship. So she's uh, she knows Spanish, and uh, she speaks Spanish fluently. I don't. I know a little bit. So she, uh, she's she been speaking a little bit to me on the phone, having uh, conversations in Spanish. And uh, Cinco, number five, number, number five. The song remains the same. So this is a concert film uh, about the great, the unparalleled, the one and only Led Zeppelin, which came out in 1977. 1977, that was my senior year in high school. And at that time, and for about two years up to that point, Led Zeppelin was my group. It was sort of my social identity. The guys I hung out with, uh, my friends, we were all into Led Zeppelin. In fact, we saw Led Zeppelin in concert the summer of 1977. Uh, with Robert Plant wearing a shirt, a blue shirt that said, nurses do it better. And um, so there's a lot of reasons why I love this movie. First of all, the performances are just uh, really good, really good performances. They've also got these fantasy uh, sequences, which are, you know, a little, okay, you know, I I can get into it a little bit. Uh, One of them brings a tear to my eye every single time. But really what makes me real emotional is watching a Jimmy Page solo. And there are plenty of those solos. And I don't know what it is about Jimmy Page. And I don't know what it is about the way he plays a guitar. And uh, I don't, I just don't know. But every time, every time, I'm a 60-year-old man, I am still brought to tears when I am in the presence of him playing his guitar Um, I see him like a shaman, like channeling all this universal energy and just putting it out there. And um, it's just amazing. It's just amazing to to hear it, but then to watch and to hear it. The speed at which his fingers move, the the natural way he moves on the stage, I don't know. It just uh, does it for me. And this is just a great showcase of Jimmy Page in his prime. And it's pretty, pretty freaking awesome. So... If you're not into Led Zeppelin, this this movie won't do it for you at all. 
But if you like Led Zeppelin and you possibly have not seen this movie from 1977, the song remains the same. It's a concert film that took place in Madison Square Garden in uh, New York. All right, numero cuatro, num number four, Man on Fire. All right, Denzel Washington is a phenomenal actor. And in this movie, he is uh, a man on fire. So the basic setup is he's, um, you know, he's hit rock bottom, really has hit rock bottom. He's hitting rock bottom, actually, in at the beginning of this movie. And uh, this uh, little girl, uh, played by Dakota Fanning, uh, he is hired to take care of her, to kind of be her uh, chaperone uh, for this wealthy Mexican family. And uh, I'm not going to give too much away other to say that, that the girl is uh, kidnapped, which happens a lot uh, in Mexico. In fact, a friend of mine uh, was, was one of those uh, kids. He was kidnapped. Um, and while he was kidnapped, they cut off the top of both of his ears and they cut off one of his fingers, you know, to, uh, to, to let, the, let the family know they were serious. So this shit really happens in Mexico. Horrible, horrible stories. And uh, Denzel Washington uh, is a man on fire trying to get uh, get revenge. It's a it's a classic revenge movie uh, for the people who took away uh, this uh, this girl who kidnapped her, and uh, it's it's just great. It's really a, it's a it's a movie about redemption. It's a movie about um, enlightenment. It's a movie about um, yeah, just just a man who really discovers some of the secrets of life. As he goes through the gauntlet uh, of trials to uh, to seek revenge, and at the in the end, uh, well, I'm not going to say anymore. So, Man on Fire, just just one of the best revenge movies you will ever see. Check it out. Uh, and it was uh, made by Scott. It's a uh, it it just uh, uh, one one of the great 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 movies. Okay, number three, you probably are more likely to have heard of Numero Tres. The Matrix, all right, The Matrix. So when this movie came out, I think it was in 1999. A lot of great movies came out in 1999. It really rocked my world. I, uh, I just, it was it was like nothing I'd ever seen. This whole concept of being the one was introduced uh, in, in this in this film uh, with Neo, Neo being the one. And uh, I don't know, at that time of my life, I was really kind of on the spiritual quest and uh, boy, this movie just, I must, I, I kid you not, I've seen this movie at least 50 times and I can still watch it. I can still watch it today and love it, love it. Even though I know the words that are coming, uh, you know, the, 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 the fight in the dojo, you know, jumping off the building, uh, 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 Morpheus being caught. <laughs> I mean, all of it, all of it. Uh, it's uh, it's just great. So I, I, I think most of you have seen that, but that is number three on my list, The Matrix. Okay, what, uh, number two is, for many people, number one. But for me, it's number two. Uh, in terms of uh, movies from Francis Ford Coppola, it's called The Godfather. And what do I love about this movie? Everything. I, I whew, Boy, just from the very beginning with The Godfather stroking the cat... And the Undertaker telling his story, and uh, and and the transformation of Michael, going from you know the military man to the head of the family, uh, what happens to Diane Keaton, the uh, the the you know what happens to, uh, you know if you haven't seen it, I, I can't believe anyone hasn't seen it, but that that is um, definitely a powerful film. I think it's like three hours long. And there isn't, uh, there isn't a moment when I'm watching it when I'm bored, you know? Uh, Luca, what is it? Luca, Luca Brasi. Yeah, Luca Brasi. Is it Luca Brasi or Luca Brasi? Um, you know, getting his hand, uh, you know, knifed on the table, the horse's head. I mean, it's just uh, so much great stuff. Um, so that's number two. And uh, number one, number one for me is Apocalypse Now. So it's interesting that two of my top films, my top two films actually, uh, were directed by Francis Ford Coppola. Uh, 
But and, and why is this one ahead of The Godfather? And they both feet they both star uh, Marlon Brando. Um, this to me is a story about uh, two men, and um, and and the the journeys they kind of take to get to the same place. So you got Marlon Brando downriver, you know, kind of heading up this cult that he has created, and everybody thinks he's gone insane. Yet when you when you finally get to him, he doesn't seem quite so insane after all. He seems to speak pretty clearly, and uh, with with wide open eyes about the the human condition. And then you got Martin Sheen, uh, who's really the star of the movie, who's you know c- going down river, and he's got you know all these different situations that uh, he comes upon, and. Um, it's 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 got so many rich scenes, you know, the Playboy playmates. Uh, and if you if you watch the uh, the Redux version, there's this whole uh, you know half out, half hour episode part of it that takes place in the, with this French family and uh, this French woman and Martin Sheen, and then you got you know the Robert Duvall, uh, the Kilgore, uh, just the opening scene too in uh, you know in Saigon. So I've been to Saigon. And that that made that made the movie even more special for me to actually be there in uh, in Saigon and to to know uh, what that what that was like. Um, so uh, Saigon, which they now call Ho Chi Minh City, yeah. So that's my number one movie, Apocalypse Now. And that uh, every time I watch it, I learn something. There's so many great lines in it that uh, that that have taught me so much over the years. So there you go. Number five, The Song Remains the Same, a documentary about Led Zeppelin live in concert. Number four, Man on Fire with Denzel Washington, the best revenge film ever made. Uh, Number three, The Matrix, just really reinvented that whole genre. Number two, The Godfather. Um, And then number one, Apocalypse Now. So there you go. Those are five films. Uh, If you... If you like movies uh, and you haven't seen any of those, I can highly recommend all five. All right. All right. That's a wrap. Fist bump to all you drivers out there. You guys rock it out there every day. Take care of yourself with this coronavirus. I honor you. I thank you for sharing your journey with me. Be safe out there. Go watch a movie. Lighten up. Okay. Things are getting pretty heavy. Uh, That was the whole purpose of this episode was to kind of Lighten up and talk about some nice things, some nice things. Take our mind off off this whole coronavirus thing for a little bit. All right? Be safe out there. This is Nomad J, J Crater, saying this episode is in the, in the can. Loved this episode of the Rideshare Dojo podcast? Head over to iTunes to subscribe, rate, and leave a review. It really helps, and it's very much appreciated. Be sure to visit RideshareDojo.com to join the conversation, access the show notes, and discover our fantastic bonus content. Thanks for listening, and be safe out there.